Uh, hey, this is Michael Drumline. I'm with Chris Fraser, who's uh, had quite an extensive career. Currently with Forno, but has played with Steve Vai, White Snake, uh, a lot of different bands. There was a, um, th there was like a, a, a one ads back in the '80s in uh, in Los Angeles called the Recycler, and sure, I, I moved to, I moved to LA, and I within like a week I got a gig at Guitar Center, so I was actually one of the salesmen at Guitar Center, and um, and there was like a, a lot of time at the Guitar Center, you know, like like Monday mornings and stuff. Where there's nobody there, and so uh, so I would have. The one ads out. I would be looking at you know people seeking musicians and drummers and stuff like that. And uh, so there was a uh, there was an ad for this guy who wanted a, the ad read wanted rock drummer familiar with odd meters um, call Marty and it said something about under the direction of Steve Vai and I was like, well, that sounds interesting and so I called him and um, he lived way out in Silmar which is kind of like ranch country in, in L.A. Okay. And I drove out there you know. All my drums in the back of my Audi, you know, and <laughs> the typical t drum yeah. too, too small of a color. Yeah, just just, <laughs> just falling out of the out of the windows, and um, I got to I got to the house, and you know, and this guy answered the door, and you know, and he went, set set up in the garage, and we started playing, and he threw all, he started throwing all these like crazy like linear things at me, you know, that I'd never really played in anything that was like in seven sixteen, five sixteen, things like that, so. It was very choppy and very linear, and very Berkeley School of Music kind of stuff, you know. And uh, so I just kind of played it how I felt it. And, uh, and he went, ah, hold on a minute, I'm going to go get my roommate. And his roommate was Steve Vai, brings in this guy. So it was Steve under the Vi. direction of Steve Vai. Steve was his roommate. Literally. And so Steve sits down and starts playing guitar and starts jamming with me and stuff. And I'm trying to keep up and I'm doing my, doing my best. And uh, he would jam for about 10 minutes or something. And then he stopped and he goes, Want to do some recording? And that was basically how I got into the business. I was in town for two weeks and just answered the right one ad and just kind of I apparently did something right. I mean, he basically said when he was playing the Attitude song, and the way that I approached the Attitude song was a very John Bonham kind of way where I just played four and just let him do this thing that phrase past the bar line over the top. Okay. No one had done that. Everyone was like Too subdividing it, okay. playing it like Bill Bruford and things like that. And, okay. and uh, I did it for a second and then and then I kind of busted into this like real big heavy crush group, you know. And um, and he liked that. He wanted that on his record and so we started working together, you know, and that's pretty much how we began working together. I, I ended up being his roommate. I, I moved into the house and we did tons of recordings, tons of gigs and you know, it was like a very interesting time for me. Um, and that's kind of how I got my, my start, you know, doing sessions with him. And then before you know it, I'm doing sessions with other people in L.A. And um, working in the studio with him was very demanding. And um, it kind of was a, it was almost like going to Navy SEAL training for musicians. Sure. Because when I came out of that, I could do anything else pretty easily you know without without too much consequence and um, so that's the Steve Vai story you know and sit, I mean long story short we've done ten records together and four or five tours all over the world and still a great friend of mine I just saw him in Tel Aviv uh, about two months ago and we hung out and had dinner him and me and Jeremy and oh Jeremy Colson oh yeah Jeremy's the a great master. guy yeah. such a nice cat I talked to him just one second because uh, Eric he took Eric Sardinas out on him with, and I knew Eric a bit, and uh, I played just, with Eric too. You know? Oh, did you? Yeah. I didn't know that. I played oh, on two of his props records. Props to Eric Sardinas, which, oh, really? I gotta go back and read I'm the on, credits. I'm on Sticks and Stones, and I'm on Black Pearls. I'm oh on my goodness. Records. I, I saw Black Pearls today. I'm going through my CDs, and yeah. he signed it for me. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I haven't listened to this uh, CD for a while. Yeah, Eric Sardinas is Eric's, like. Eric's one of my dearest friends. The rockingest, uh, the resonator guy that <laughs> ever lived. Um, he's a, he's evil uh, blues guy. Yeah, he's well, a, not evil, but that's his. That's definitely that's his, his persona. persona. His persona. But he's yeah, well. I, maybe I shouldn't. I don't want to blow his cover or anything like that. He's a he's a, he's a goofy guy. He's really funny. He's like you know, loves to laugh, and he's probably the biggest. But between him and Jeff Pilson, I've never seen two guys that like to pull pranks on people more than most. Really? Of them. Yeah. I, 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 just, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't know about the pranks, but I've seen Eric at shows and I'll come up. Everybody, he just all oh, thanks for coming, and he's so generous, you know. Yeah. You guys, I tell you what, here's one thing I wanted to bring up: um, attitude, guys at the top, you know, the professional attitude, not only 
and you're playing, but I mean yeah. the, the way you guys uh, carry yourselves. Yeah. Um, do you, you always, you, everybody that I've met, like 99%, you know, just super nice people, uh, generous, yeah. uh, considerate. I mean, you think these rock drummers are going to be walking around with, with uh, attitude, but it's such a professional uh, way you carry yourself. Yeah, uh, yeah. How, how do you... You know, is that your parents? Is that I mean, is that what you learn in the business? Is that just well, uh, yeah. I mean, my parents were very polite, nice people. I was brought up to be very respectful to other people and humble about you know, but was good at something. I was always taught to be very humble. My mother was a, a great folk singer, you know. Okay. And uh, my grandfather was the first test pilot for United Airlines and did all kinds of aeronautical breakthroughs. He invented all kinds of things for airplanes and jets and stuff, and, you know. But he always had a very down-to-earth kind of attitude about the way he dealt with people. Um, I think, you know, generally musicians nowadays are, I don't think that a lot of musicians who were, who were dickheads work very much. Anymore, okay. You know, because right. it's, half of it's about how, how well you work with others and how considerate you are with other people. And on a tour like this with all these superstars, you gotta be cool. You know, you got to be a nice person and considerate. I think the people who are jerks don't work very much. The guys that yeah. are they're professional guys that are successful. You know, it's, it takes a certain uh, There's, kind of person. To be successful too, you have to be. You can't ever doubt what you're doing. You know, and you have to. You have to strive to be the best at what you do. And I, when I was first starting out in the business, I never said no to anything. I did everything. Anything that was offered to me, I did it. Even if it didn't pay, I did all of it. And what that, what ended up happening was that I just got a reputation as being, in having a very strong work ethic and being able to do anything. And I just took looked at everything as a learning experience, whether I got paid or whether I didn't get paid. You know, and the more you do that, all of a sudden the paid gigs start rolling in because all of a sudden everybody knows your name and everybody's you know been been using you and it's just like. It's a really good way to, to, to do it, you know. You can't sit at home and wait for the phone to ring either. You gotta get out there and play, and get out there and meet people. It's the name of the game. I, I played with Whitesnake years yeah, ago. Yeah, I actually yeah. went to that concert in '87, and you have an '87 shirt. Yeah, this on. is a 1987. Uh, so Tommy Aldridge was uh, in the band in his back right, in the band, but you right. played in Whitesnake for what? I did. Period? I played in uh, 2007 to 2010. Okay. And um, I. Uh, I was doing. We were doing a show about two weeks ago down down in uh, Florida, and um, and some fans came backstage, you know, and we were all hanging out, talking and chatting a little bit. And one and one of them was this this girl. This girl had this white snake shirt on. It was a little big on her, you know. She's kind of small, and uh, and I said, "Oh, you get that? That's a really cool white snake shirt." She goes, "Oh yeah, you like it? It's from 1987, you know. It's, it's my ex-husband's. I stole it from him when we got a divorce." And I, and I was like. Oh really? <laughs> and I was wearing a, a rock and roll gangstar shirt. You know? oh, she goes, okay, I sure. really like those rock and roll gangstar shirts, and I can't, I can't find them. They're really hard to find. I was like, "Well, trade you." Traded it straight up. She took her shirt right off. Boobs were out. It was just such a rock and roll moment. I took my shirt off. I gave it to her, and so, isn't that a white snake kind That's of story? How you got into white snake? <laughs> <laughs> that was the audition. <laughs> We're in the parking lot. You know how you come up to a concert and you hear the band, somebody's playing on their stereo. I swear to God, I thought it was coming out of somebody's car, you know, because it's real windy out there. It's kind of faint. And I got out and I'm like, that sounds too good. And it was actually Foreigner. And it was like a half a mile away. It was past the, the hill. It's windy as hell out here. And it sounded so amazing, oh, like thanks. there. So, I mean, I can't imagine. Thank you very much. You treated it as a sound check today or something? It was like a sound that? check. It was a couple songs you were sound checking. Oh, yeah. 5 30. We were just kind of tweaking the snare end because. Trying a bunch of different things, and uh, so today we got it. I think we got it really dialed in. It's great, great sound today. So the groove. I mean, you're. I love your. Well, I've seen you play a couple of times with the Bonzo. Yeah. So yeah. Thank saw, you. Thanks very uh, much. The first time Todd Bird like did Nam the next day, he's like, "Yeah, this is Chris Fraser from Foreigner," and I was like, "Well, you played like the entire show last night." <laughs> and we were laughing about it because you played three songs. Yeah. And uh, well, we kind of, we kind of mashed them together. It was like one really long song, but yeah, it lasted it was twenty minutes. A whole lot of love, the crunch, something else. There was like something else thrown in there. That was the first time I did Bonzo Bash. But to come out and like kick off that show, yeah, all there guys. was a little pressure there, you know. But, uh, but they they sort of got me off the hook the second time. I just I played uh, the Wonton song. I love the Wonton song. Great.
So anyway, that was a, that was a treat. But uh, today's going to be fantastic because we got a you were treated us to the center uh, front row, and you know I grew up on this, and I, I guess you did too. Yeah, absolutely. This music. Yeah, I was in uh, I was in let's see junior high school when um, feels like the first time it came out. You know, so made an impression on me then, and you know, it's still making an impression on me now. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be a, a thrill for you. How long have you been in that for? Um, it'll be two years in September. Oh, okay. Beginning of September. It seems like forever, but because uh, you know. it just uh, the way it sounded today, it, was it just like, seems like I got the gig yesterday. To be honest, with you. Oh, it's been the quickest two years of my life. You know, because we just we work so much, we do so many shows, and travel so much. You know. Well, you had a really cool uh, Tonight Show gig. Uh, oh yeah. That was really neat. Because it was like uh, instead of playing one or two songs, you played like a very good medley. So kind of you know reminded everybody of the four hits. and a half minute medley of four songs yeah it, and it was actually worked pretty well you know going from one thing to the next it was pretty cool yeah I have I still have that on my DVR I can't figure out how to copy it and it's and it's one of those shows that's like one of the last Jay Leno shows you know we oh, okay. I think it was like sure. three weeks later Jay Leno was off the off the air after that so it was kind of a historical event if anybody knows how to, I can get a copy of that, please let me know. Well, we'll see if we can do something. I don't know if I can call, it, call that Tonight Show. Um, I have no uh, fall there. This is the um, soundtrack of Summer Tour. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is it not the soundtrack of Summer? It is. Foreigner Sticks and uh, Don Felder. Yeah. And actually, Just, my buddy's opening up, Jimmy Griffin, the kid I know uh, oh, from okay. St. Louis here. Yeah. But, I uh, haven't met him yet. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, you'd want yeah, talk to him if you get a chance. Yeah, the, it's... Uh, Peak Floyd stuff they're real famous for but his original stuff yeah, he's great cool but anyway back to the soundtrack of summer I mean it's hit city tonight every song's a hit yeah what are you guys playing that's not on the radio just to make it easier on you nothing nothing every song you know that's just so rare yeah, all, the, all the Don Felder songs that he, that he had something to do with writing with the Eagles he's doing um, and then but I think he's actually doing quite a, sh a short set he's like doing a 45 minute set so He's not even doing his whole his his whole set, but every song that he's playing, it's all, every one of them's an Eagles hit. Every one of the songs that we're playing is a foreigner hit, and then Sticks as well. Sticks, it's just one hit after another. You'll recognize every song tonight. Well, I don't know if I should bring this up, but I play uh, the radio, that pop radio for my dogs, and it's like there's nothing I cannot listen to it. It's like the pop hits, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like there's no, it's not even music. And I, is it dog torture? I don't know. I mean, I have to say dog torture, but you know what I mean? I think they don't like it. But it's like, it's that background, blah, blah, music that's just not interesting. But I mean, where, I mean, thank God, like, you guys are still playing. Not that you shouldn't still be playing, but I mean, it's like, the the, the enduring music endures, let's put it that way. Is that my point? I think dogs have really good uh, taste in music. Okay. So if it's something that they don't like, then chances are it sucks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You shouldn't listen to it. But I mean, the, the, during music endures. I mean, my these songs are so great. But I got, I saw Four Hundred Four when it came out, and I actually was in the front row in Kansas City, and it was raining, and it was, it was surreal, and it was just so weird to be like, it was an amazing concert. It was like all overcast and it rained, but people like took off, so I ended up like in the front row, and uh, and I bought Four Hundred Four. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I, I had a lot of Four Hundred records, but that one I don't think I had. Yeah. And I bought that one like two years ago, and I listened to that thing front to back, and I'm like, oh my god, I cannot believe mm. how great this record is. And I knew it, but you know, to listen to it again, and to see it played live again, it's so good. The music you know, is it's so uh, good. it's interesting that you mention that because we're going to be doing um, a series of shows in Atlantic City where uh, our set is going it, to it's going to be comprised primarily of songs from Four or Four. But you know, originally oh, wow, we were going to do. Foreign or Four in its entirety, but now it's kind of changed, and we're going to do most of Foreign or Four, and then some, I guess. Is what I, th I think it's Foreign or Four and then some is what they're going to call okay. that particular series of gigs, but it's like, I think it's two shows at the end of September in uh, Atlantic City, if I'm not mistaken. And so I'm going to get to play all those, all those cool songs, you know. It's going to be different from what we're doing now, you know. This is actually, the set we're doing tonight is pretty short. It's, oh, it's really? 80 minutes, and normally our set's about an hour and a half. Okay. But it's such a great lineup tonight. Well, uh, I don't want to take up too much more of your dressing room time. Oh, no. But we can... by, by, by all means, man. Thanks for coming, and uh, I hope you enjoy the show. Oh. And 
hello to everybody at home and um, you know I don't know if you have any any kind of video uploading things that you're doing with with drum line but um, um, I've been recording all of the shows uh, on GoPro cameras now okay. so all right I'm gonna be editing them with with uh, with the board tapes board mixes oh, that's fantastic and, then it's less for me to do but if are you <laughs> implying that if you have something yeah. you will send it to me yeah. and I can upload that yes I would love to okay and drumlines interactive that's one thing that we try to get across to the guys it's like I don't just come out here and be like you know my agenda I want you to input and feel like that you can put up oh here's my picture yeah. or I've got a thing coming out or we did a yeah. show and here's my thing and so just you know it's a, it's more of an interactive thing it's a two-way street sure so uh, feel free it's a tool for you cool so anything you want well, to put up there I mean you know I'm a big fan of yours and you're a wonderful guy thanks man and uh, thanks for the interview thank you nice so much to you. Bye-bye. <laughs>